quit my job. I quit my job after being forced against my will by the floor manager to shovel flamingo balls inside a claustrophobic dark room with an oversized shovel. I can't do it, I told him. You can't do it, he said. I couldn't do it. Besides, the guy had been persistently coughing in the proximity of my face and I did not even know what his COVID-19 status was. His top priority was not my health, but packing bean bags. Thoughts were racing through my mind. The Alto Venova is my passion, not packing bean bags for an inhumane and unsustainable capitalism agenda that cares little for the blue collar workers laboring day and weekend to fulfill beanbag orders for very minuscule pay. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? How dare you continue to look away? I quit my job after being forced against my will by the floor manager to shovel flamingo bowls inside a claustrophobic dark room with an oversized shovel. I can't do it, I told him. You can't do it, he said. I couldn't do it. Besides, the guy had been persistently coughing in the proximity of my face and I did not even know what his COVID-19 status was. His top priority was not my health but packing bean bags. Thoughts were racing through my mind. The Alto Venova is my passion, not packing bean bags for an inhumane an unsustainable capitalism agenda that cares little for the blue collar workers laboring day and weekend to fulfill beanbag orders for very minuscule pay considering the Herculean tasks of mass producing, packaging, shipping beanbags for giant retail outlets and other fancy beanbag brands. I felt exploited and grossly mistreated. So I packed my things and left. What's wrong? asked an Irish co-worker, David. I never used swear words, but I looked at him straight in the face and blurted out loudly, I can't take this shit. He grinned and I walked out, never looking back to that dungeon of a beanbag factory. All I want to do is to play the Vanova and make music and make a living doing it. I don't mind a humane side job in the process if I get one, but I won't allow myself to be exploited ever again by an uncaring and unsustainable capitalism that only values my sweat, not my humanity. So when I woke up today on August 17, 2021, I knew I had to lose my Venova virginity.
So what does that mean? It means I'm taking the the Nova, the music from just you know playing around having fun of course I, I'm always gonna play around and have fun with it because that's that's what I do but I intend to take that you know experimenting playing having fun and also turn it into a sustainable and humane uh, sort of you know business model where I can make a living maybe I can you know employ other people I don't know you know if if it is God's will you know playing this music but I will I want to do it in a way that respects other people's health respects other people's lives not in a way that only cares about maximizing profits at the sheer expense of other people as I have witnessed I mean there were some good things working in that uh, beanbag factory but there were also some dark things you know um, people could be fired at any moment notice they could be sent home there's no work because of whatever issues and the main goal as I discovered was maximizing the profit the bottom line for the capitalist the business owner and I could sense a lot of discontent amongst the employees but this discontent was not given a voice was not allowed to speak and I know I live in Denmark in the 21st century but these things are happening because the workers apparently I've you know I, I was always wondering there are people from Eastern Europe from Romania Lithuania of course there are some people from Denmark uh, Ireland different places you know and I found out maybe because these people you know uh, they know they are foreigners here and it's easy to maybe exploit them than to try and exploit the local people you know so one can profit of their ignorance and of their fear you know they are afraid to lose the source of income if they get it you know so I've just witnessed that and of course in my communication with a boss who communicates very nicely and I suppose in many ways he's a very nice guy um, you know he had his experience for Danish companies going to Southeast Asia you know in the rural parts he told me in Malaysia and other places to seek cheap labor you know so that they could send these goods to Denmark and profit off the cheap labor so I, he has an experience in cheap labor and exploiting cheap labor to maximize profits and I guess the same business model is what he's using today in in Denmark out there and he's supplying the biggest uh, you know shops and brands in the country and also in Germany and many other places so I just witnessed firsthand an unsustainable capitalism that in my humblest opinion should be not be tolerated in today's terms because it cares very little in my humble opinion and experience about the people who are greasing the wheels you know who are really laboring most people when you get they get their bin bags they don't care or ask about you know who are the people making our products I, from now on because of my experience whenever I look at even the microphone that I'm using I'm using a road microphone right now I start to think about who are the people who made the components you know not the brand because remember road is just a brand you know I want to know about the people who worked or subcontracted to work because this guy is subcontracted by big brands and big companies to do the donkey work essentially that's what we're doing and these brands take all the credits and all the glory and all the profits and he also takes a cut of the big profit so I'm just saying who makes your products do you care you know so in playing my Vanova I'll be exploring some of these very humane 
uh, themes and in losing my Venova virginity, meaning I, I'm taking this just from a novice to go pro, I will be talking about issues like uh, the exploitation of labor, the exploitation of other human beings for the sake of profit. You know, that exploitation can take so many forms and I think I, I will touch on some of those issues. And of course, my music always at its core, I'm giving praise to the most high the one who rules over everything um, and I'm also going to talk about the injustice that I see I'm going to talk about the joy that I see you know and many other things um, and today I went to Aarhus which is the second capital city of Denmark um, you know I live in the Aarhus area so I just went to the city and uh, I used to live right in the heart of the city but I moved to the countryside where my music started and developed out here in Denmark, you know. And I met a guy at the train station. His name is Matthias. And, he, you know, he was giving people information about the city and stuff like that. And he said, wow, what's that instrument? I said, it's called a Venova. I said, ah, he used to play saxophone. You know, he, he told me he grew up in Ethiopia. He's a Dane who grew up in Ethiopia. And I suppose, I don't know if his parents were, you know, working in Ethiopia or diplomats, I, I don't know. But then he said, yeah, when I came to Denmark, I couldn't find a band, so I, he stopped uh, practicing and playing. And I said, you know, I think you should just uh, pick up your saxophone or your piano and start start playing again, you know, just for fun. And, you know, he let me shoot with him. He was very polite. I told him about an Ethiopian musician called Hailu Majin whose music I love and, and whose life story is also quite inspiring because he went into oblivion and then he was rediscovered and now I think he's doing okay with his music, you, you know, in his old age, which I think is a very inspiring thing. Um, even though he was working as a taxi driver and he still does that, I guess. Um, but in, in a documentary I watched, he was talking about he doesn't necessarily need to do that. So many musicians find, find themselves a position where they have to do some kind of side job especially now with the coronavirus and so on remember i'm not talking about those musicians in hollywood or you know i'm not gonna name names i'm talking about the real musicians who sometimes find it difficult to pay their bills you know to get from day to day they just really love their music and so on but maybe never get lucky enough to get so-called hollywood big break because we know those things happen to only a minority but there are many good quality musicians around the world um, I think and we know that the streaming uh, system of paying for music streaming is extremely also rigged by the capitalistic system so only a, a minority maybe one or two percent of the top musicians make all the money on Spotify you know, even if I'm listening on Spotify to all these musicians who are not the major label musicians, my money somehow ends up paying those musicians. So I, I think the system is broken in many ways. The capitalistic system, whether it's in regards to making beanbags or, you know, I, I, <laughs> I think capitalism has many great advantages, but I think it needs to be reformed because in its current form, I think it's a dinosaur and I think it doesn't do much service, good service to workers, you know. I hear about, uh, you know, in the press, when we read, we hear about workers and companies, I won't name names right now, um, where, you know, they, they, they get paid peanuts and their working conditions, I've, I've read that some had to pee in bottles because they were not allowed to get off the assembly line. You know, you can read about the story where people had to pee in bottles in a major corporation that everybody, you know, even I have bought things from that corporation. But I think it's good. It's an efficient corporation. But at the same time, I think they need to take care of their people, to take better care of their people. I mean, what's the point of having one shareholder worth billions and billions and be one of the richest people in the world when the masses of these people really, they could be treated fairly and decently and 
that's part of losing my Vinova virginity is I want to, to do it professionally and so skillfully that if I, when, when, not if, I get that place where I will have a stage and I'm able to, people, more people are listening to my story, I will always tell my story, you know. But when more people pay attention, that they will realize you need to care about where you, the goods that you're using are coming from. How are the people who are making these things being treated? You know, the, the human beings. Never mind their ethnicity or whatever, but they are people. How are they being treated? Because most of these people don't even have a voice. So, this is me losing my virginity and I had an opportunity, my, my Venova virginity. I had an opportunity to play at different places in the city just to try it out, you know, because mostly I'm usually playing uh, in the countryside and so on, but to really like go out there and let me try and do this, of course. Um, and uh, from now on, I'm, I'm really gonna try to make this into a living, you know, regardless of how complicated it is with God's help, you know. So that's what losing my Venova virginity is about.